So good evening, everyone. Welcome to our lecture in our virtual passy here at the Chico Xavier Learning Center in Portland, Oregon. We're very happy to have you all and to study with together this beautiful chapter from Living Spring tonight. But before we start our lecture that will take about 20 minutes, we'll do a brief prayer. And I invite you all to close your eyes, take a deep breath, connecting with your inner self, with the place that you are, knowing that you are not alone, that our invisible beings around us, surrounding ourselves all the time. And today, the superior two spirits, they are here to take care of us. They know our needs, our worries, our pains, our challenges. And they are here to help us. So at this moment, let give them all our worries, surrendering to the love of God, to this opportunity to embrace this moment with full attention so we can learn and grow. May each one of us our homes be filled with light, with peace, and with love. The chapter tonight is chapter 52 from the book Living Spring, and the title is Serving in Progressing. And as we always do, we talk a little bit about the way that Emmanuel treats this book, the collection, Living Spring. He chooses one small verse of the New Testament. Sometimes I think that even the Old Testament. And he finds a way to put together the whole chapter, developing these five, six, ten words Reclaiming the voice of what the apostles or even Jesus were trying to say. And this one is from the epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 12 from Paul. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. So he's really calling our attention, like, you know, stand up, let's go. So Emmanuel develops that small verse into the chapter. If in ordinary farming, it is difficult to raise a wholesome crop so that the world's storehouses do not lack bread for the body, toiling to acquire the spiritual qualities that comprise the living and imperishable food for the soul is almost sacrificial. So he's comparing this the the amount of work that is necessary to take care of a farm with the amount of work that is necessary to know how to live a good life from a spiritual perspective. The seed of goodwill has in fact been planted, but a thousand obstacles impair its germination and growth. It is the silt of the futilities of the inferior life. And then he goes. The invasion of worms, represented by all kinds of annoyances, the clay of envy and spite, the thunder of miscomprehension, the hail of evil, the detritus of slander, the heat wave of responsibility. And he continues, the cold spell of indifference, the drought of misunderstanding, the crabgrass of ignorance, the clouds of worry, the dust of disillusionment. So all of these are like weeds 
that can claim space in our hearts and somehow take us out from the path of enlightenment, of balance, of peace. It is as if all the, imponder the imponderable forces of the human experience have come together against those who want to progress on the pathway of the good. And how many times we think, well, I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm really putting effort. And, you know, things just do not go right. You know, people don't understand. I, I'm always worried. You know, I'm really without hope at this point. Why is that? Why we have not reached the divine inheritance for which we are just destined, any fall can easily happen. So he's calling attention because we still have our evil knees. We need to pay attention with our what our thoughts are, our actions are, because we are surrounded by all of those difficulties. The ascent is the toil of sweat persistence and sacrifice and we know that going up here is not easy for anyone so we need to be with the right ear we need to be in shape because if we are couch potato for 10 years and then try to you know go up the himalayas we won't be able to do that and sometimes life feels like the himalaya right if your heart is truly interested in the upper environs of life do not retreat before the struggle do not retreat before the struggle so he's saying do not give up though faced with every sort of difficulty go forward offering your endeavor to all your endeavor your of perfection all that is noble beautiful and useful Remember Paul's advice and do not stand still. So it's not only giving up. It's even standing still because sometimes in the middle of the pain, of the difficulties, of the challenges, we basically freeze. We freeze of fear. We feel hopeless. We want to give up. Many of us are feeling alone, abandoned. Mental health is a world crisis and he's telling us exactly what we need to do and what we should not do so here's the guidance move your exhausted hands raise your weak knees and get busy being sure that in order to get the best out your of life you have to serve and evolve without stopping and we know that Paul was a type of uh, character that he would not with sweeten the pill. He will say it exactly how it is. We know that he came from a great family. He studied a lot. He went to the best universities. He had the best mentors to guide him. He spoke multiple languages. Um, he had a, a lot of power and um, influence among the Jewish people before uh, turning to Paul, from Saul to Paul. When he realized that he was going to the wrong direction, that persecuting Christians was not the way to go, that Christ was the pathway to enlightenment, he decided to change. But all those qualities of strength, perseverance, trust, knowledge, intelligence, courage were still within him. But after working, I don't know how many years, 50 years devoting his life, he was a man that has suffered a lot. Every time that he was leaving a town after sharing the gospel, he would always run away. Run away when people were throwing him up, 
stones on him, or he was imprisoned, or he people were smashing him with all sorts of ways. So when he shares with us the discipline that is needed through pain, that's not only the discipline that he saw from Jesus going through pain, going through disillusionment in terms of you know how the humankind has treated him, but also the way that he experienced. So in this verse, not only in this verse, in this chapter, the chapter 12, we're talk, talk, talking about chapter 12, verse 12. Paul talks about how God disciplined us and what to expect in the spiritual realm. This is the only letter that we have from the Acts of the Apostles that talk about the spiritual life. All of them were talking about the daily things, what they were experiencing. In this one, which is a, it's so important, this, this epistle to the Hebrews, that some people may call it the fifth gospel. Mostly because it's unique, it is written in a very peculiar and, and, and um, knowledgeable way. It doesn't treat about the day-to-day, -day, but what to expect later. Um, Emmanuel says that the formula to go through all these difficulties in this chapter is to have patience and is to be perseverant. That's the only way that we can open the door and find what we need, what we are looking for. So if there is suffering on our day-to-day, -day, if there's misunderstanding surroundings, if there's desires that are fulfilled, people that are not grateful, he's basically reminding us that crying, complaining, feeling like a victim, standing still, frozen, it's not going to help. That all this experience that we, go, that we go through are opening doors for us to become better people. So I'm going to, I will go through the epistle, the, uh, the epistle to the Hebrews. I usually don't go this deep when I am going through the lecture, but this one is so important that I'm not going to read all of them, just the, the ones that are highlighted. So verse from 1 to 6 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and we were talking about this a few minutes ago, who are these witnesses? These are the invisible witnesses. These are the spirits. We are all surrounded by invisible beings. Who are these beings? These beings... They are exactly the way that we think, the way that we behave. So that's the importance of prayer. Because my behavior, my line of thoughts will dictate my friendly um, nuances that are surrounding me. So imagine that I am all the time complaining. Who are these witnesses? These are spirits that also like to complain, that are going to make me complain more. What if it, I fight, I'm angry? Um, what are the type of the witness? Same thing, angry spirits. He continues, let us run from let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So he's saying that the experience that we go through, let's put perseverance, do not give up. It is hard today. It's going to get better tomorrow. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. So he's saying it is even if it's super hard here in the material realm with the material thing. So I'm having financial difficulties, I lost my job, I am sick, I'm going to a divorce, 
I just lost my child. I'm feeling alone. He's saying, fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the spiritual Christ. Because all the experiences that you're going through are somehow lessons, disciplines that are posed by God to help us grow. Grow how? How can I feel happy if I am suffering? I can't be happy if I'm suffering. Oh, wow. But if we look back and we look at times that we had harsh experiences, we will notice that in majority of those, we came out much stronger, much better. And he's going to say something very interesting about parenting. Consider him, Jesus, who endured such a position from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose your heart. We say, hey, dude, you're suffering a lot here, but guess what? Jesus came giving the example and he didn't have an easy life. And the reason why he didn't have is not because he couldn't, because he's good, the governor of the planet. It was because he was teaching by example. Because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his. As his. So the same way that a father disciplines a father or a mother, parents discipline their children, God is disciplining us, disciplining us on our selfishness, in our pride in our inability to forgive, in our attachment to power, to title, to money, to beauty, to whatever, to health, to our bodies. So these lessons, they need to be transformed or translated inside of us. Instead of me looking at suffering and pain, I'm looking at what should I learn from here? Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what? Children are not disciplined by their father. Yes. What happens if a, a child is not disciplined by us? They're going to go crazy. They're not going to be happy. If we give that child what they want 24 by 7, they're going to become monsters. So when we find hardship, we know that it's basically a limit that God is giving to us to think. And sometimes we need to be in the corner for a while when we go through a hard disease, when we go to the loss of someone that we love. And sometimes it takes one month, one year, 10 years, a lifetime. But what is a lifetime in comparison to eternal beings that we are? Moreover, we have all had we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteous, righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. We need to remember that. And that's a difficult call for each one of us because no one likes to suffer. And then the verse that he, he chose for the chapter that Emmanuel chose for the chapter. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. So <clears throat> this chapter reminds us of the effort, labor, that we need to put to pursue our spiritual path, how we need to re-educate our behaviors. This is not something that we learn at college. At the, we can go to the best schools, we're not going to learn that. Our spiritual growth has to come from another place. And this place is these daily challenges that we live and how we deal with them. And that's, that's when I think that 
faith, knowing there's something more than this life, knowing there's something more than the material material realm, knowing that there's a loving Father that cares for us, helps a lot. We know that suffering in this planet is inevitable because of the, the grade that we are. We're still a, a planet of trials and pain. So we face with painful circumstances, either on our lives or on the other people's lives all the time. We cross the street, we see a homeless. We open the news, we see a war. So how can we be happy if we're seeing other people suffering? If I can be happy knowing that others suffer, then it's another flag, a red flag for me. So Emmanuel tells us that in ordinary farming, it is difficult to raise a wholesome crop so that the world's storehouses do not lack bread for the body. The same thing. What is the effort that the farm needs to do? It's not only sowing the seed. He needs to water. He needs to pull out the weeds. He needs to put all the, you know, poison to kill bad bugs and everything else. We need to do that with ourselves too. It's not only planting the seed. The seed is already in us because we are creatures of God. So inside of us, we have all the loss of love, justice, and and charity, we know what is right inside of us, but we need to dream. We need to water. We need to uh, make sure that we are we keep seeding the right seeds or sowing the right seeds. And these right seeds are the service to charity, charity to us and charity to others. So it's it's going beyond the material things. It's not only going to my work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's not enough. That's not going to bring me peace. That's not going to fill my heart. That's not going to protect me from depression, from suicide. Even if I have money, power, beauty, everything that the majority of the humanity dreams with, that, that doesn't protect me from suicide if I don't learn to love one another. So the same way that we need to sow and care for the seeds, the seeds of the fruits and vegetables that we want to reap so we can have nutritious food on our table to achieve the balanced spiritual diet we need to choose the correct seeds that we're going to put in our lives. So we need to take care of our thoughts. We need to take care of our feelings. We need to take care of our emotions, our words, our actions. And how many times do we do that? What type of books do we read? How is our life on social media? What do I watch on TV? What type of music do I listen to? Who are the people that I hang out with? So these are all seeds that are coming to me, input. And remember, I have the invisible witnesses all the time. There's this major Wi-Fi network. If we think that WhatsApp is powerful, imagine a universal WhatsApp. That's exactly what we have with these witnesses. We are communicating back and forth. Sometimes we get ideas and we go, like, what does that, I mean, where does that come from? I wasn't thinking about that. And then the idea comes again. Then the idea comes again. So why is that? So the seed of goodwill has in fact been planted, but a thousand obstacles impair its germination and growth. So we have the good seeds. We know that we are sons and daughters of God. That we have everything it takes to succeed but we continue to face these infinite challenges that really make our past pretty complicated and rough. So we need to get ready. I remember on Romans, also called Romans uh, chapter seven, verse 19, he says, for I do not do the good I want to, 
but the evil I do not want to. This I keep doing. And how many times do we feel that? I know what is right and I keep doing it wrong. And I don't want to do it wrong and I keep doing it wrong and I want to do it right and it doesn't work like that. Because we bring inside of us centuries, centuries of errors, vices, mistakes, rage. And in, in a, an expected moment, they just burst inside of us. And in this burst, many times we, we bump, we cross back with other people that also do not like us because of things that we have done in the past. Maybe not in this life. But the attention that we need to pay is not outside of us, it's inside of us. So when something like that, a difficulty, a challenge, an obstacle pops up in, in front of me, what is my first thought? Because that's what I need to pay attention to. This is who I am. And the moment that I still have that yucky thing inside of me, then I need to take care of it. In our lives, it is the silt of the futilities of a pure life. And I put this Adam and Eve and the serpent here because the serpent, I was you uh, listening to a lecture from Arthur a while back and he compares the serpent as the material realm, as kind of a drags itself on the dust. The dust meaning all the matter that we are surrounded. And interesting enough, there is a verse from the sutras that are 5,000 years old that talks about the same thing. So comparing this dust, the soil, with all the fear matter that we get attached to and we cannot fly. So Emmanuel here, he's referring exactly to the way that we attach to our bodies, to our families, to our jobs, to our titles. And we create our values and habits around it. So the moment that I bring that, I bring that value, I have that value inside of me, then I have these worms, these annoyances, as he says. So the clay of envy and spite. So how hard is it for us when we see that someone achieved something that we dream for? The whole entire life and for them seems so easy or the thunder of miscomprehension. So nobody understands what I'm trying to say in my house, at work, or the hail of evil. So it seems that everywhere that I go, people only see bad things about me. The clouds of worry, and many of us feel that right now. And that's why we, we become addicted to drugs to help us sleep, to help us awake, to help us do not get anxious, to help us work, to help us smile. The detritus of slander. So how does slander really hurts my pride when I know that someone is not telling the truth about me? What do I do? The heat wave of responsibility. So being called out into what I need to do when I don't want to do. The cold spell of indifference, and that's a hard one. <clears throat> the drought of misunderstanding. The crabgrass of ignorance. Ignorance inside of me, but also ignorance around others. The weeds that we need to pull out. The heat wave of responsibility the dust of disillusionment. It is as if all the imponderable forces of the human experience have come together against those who want to progress on the pathway of the good. And some people say, I don't want to be a spiritist. You guys suffer too much. We all suffer, but how do we do with it? How do we prepare for it? 
What type of gear do we put on when we know that we are going through a steep hill? How is my mindset? Do I look at my limitations? Do I look at my choices? How do I cultivate peace in the moment that everything seems to be wrong around me? So knowing what we have in our backpack is very important. What we bring into our backpack today, because we know that the, the ascent will have will bring a lot of sweat, persistence, and sacrifice. And these outside conditions, we do not control. We do not control the, the outside conditions. We do not control if people are going to look as if people are going to uh, hurt us, if people are going to hire us, if, uh, if my illness is going to go bad tomorrow. We do not control. There are just so many things we can hold on. So we need to bring within us this water of faith, this neck of supporting friends, the strong willingness to help others because these are the seeds that are going to help me get the spiritual food that I need in the moment that I need. But for that, I need to keep the price as Paul says in Jesus and the spiritual realm, not and the moment right now. If your heart is truly interested in upper environments of life, do not retreat before the struggle. Do not retreat. Do not give up. Surrender. So let's be picky about what choices we make today, what choices we bring to our lives. Because these choices can make our suffering, our difficulties even harder than they should be. Because we are never alone. We are never alone. We have our guardian angels. We have the superior spirits helping us. But for that, we need to connect with them. We need to connect the Wi-Fi, the WhatsApp with them. And the best way to connect is being an instrument God, doing good to others, be nice, helping others. Our behavior is our spiritual idea. And then finishing up the chapter, move your exhausted hands, raise your weak knees and get busy. Being sure that in order to get the best out of your life, you must serve and evolve without stopping. So we will need to get out of our own way. He's saying carve time, find time, because many of us have a very busy life. So if we wait to help only when we have time, it's not going to happen. It's just like having a child. There's never a good time. So we need to find time to do good, to help others so we can help ourselves. So with that, I would like to Prepare for our spiritual being. And I invite each one of you to always have a bottle with water close to you. Because these waters are magnetized by the good spirits. Where they put all the spiritual vitamins that we need. To bring us peace, health. To balance our physical body, but also our spiritual body. So dear God, we are here in your name. You know our worries, our limitations, our concerns. Help us listen to your words. Understand these experiences, opportunities for our growth. Lessons that need to be learned for our own good, for our discipline. At this moment, we ask our guardian angels to put their hands on our heads. Giving us that transfusion 
that we need to feel better. Dear God, empty our hearts with all the sorrow, with all the worries. At this moment, we surrender to you. Involve our family members in your love, in your peace, as each one of us is facing a different, different challenge every day. Inspire us to find the best way to help ourselves and help others. To extend our hands through a smile to a good word. To a hug, through some food, whatever is possible for us. Help us grow the good seeds inside of our, our hearts. So we can be representatives of your love and your life, whatever we go. And with that, with a grateful heart, we say thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. We wish you all a great evening, a good night, sleep well.